on this channel, among all of the ridiculous things that I choose to talk about, there's no denying the fact that books, manga, and anime seem to come up a lot. So there's absolutely no getting around the fact that there is a series of books that I should probably talk about, considering the fact that it spawned two anime movies and an entire manga. And that series is Vampire Hunter D. And I absolutely love this series. This series actually has an entire little mini shelf all to itself back there. I don't know if you can see it, considering the fact that it's directly behind me in all of my videos. And, you know, I sit here in the dark, so you couldn't see it anyway, even if I wasn't in front of it. Moral of the story, it gets its own shelf, okay? This series has like 50 books in it. Actually, it's like 20 or something. I have not read all of them. I personally have only read six. But that's way more than enough to know that I love them, and it's definitely enough to make this video. Now, this video will be a video about the entire series as a whole, not just one particular book. It will also be spoiler free. I really, the whole point of this video is really to explain to you why you should read Vampire Hunter D. Also, if you have read it, you might as well stick around because this is going to be fun. I guess first things first, if you have consumed anything that is Vampire Hunter D in the past, anime or manga, you owe it to yourself to read the source material. I personally only picked this up because I watched and loved the anime Bloodlust in particular. I had seen the first one before I saw Bloodlust, but it was Bloodlust that really opened me up to everything. I loved Bloodlust so much when I was a kid. And when it first came out, I watched it so many times that it literally got on my friend's nerves. I'm looking at you, Beale. But anyway, if we're going to talk about what makes these books actually so enjoyable to read, I think it actually comes down to a handful of things. First and foremost, the world building. And I haven't actually talked about world building on this channel in a while, but these is just stellar. Like... These books take place in the far future, in a future where humanity went into some vast nuclear war. After the destruction of the planet through nuclear war, the vampires rebuilt everything using a combination of super advanced technology, the likes of which we'd never seen before, and magic. Creating a world of vast cities and transportation systems and space travel and just... It's insane what they create once they take over, especially with their ability to focus and focus over long periods of time without ever dying. It's truly like an ultra advanced world of the future created by these eternal beings. All of this, of course, being spearheaded and made possible by the oldest and most powerful of all the vampires, Dracula, or as he is referred to in this as the sacred ancestor. Actually, as a matter of fact, none of the vampires are even called vampires in this. They are simply referred to as the nobility. Now, at the point where we are at in the story, the nobility's power for some reason is waning and they are starting to slowly die off and no one really knows why. But it's creating room in the world for humanity to start building back up, for its numbers to kind of come back and for it to regain some of its strength. And in this process, we end up with a whole category of people coming up, the Vampire Hunter. And jumping back real quick to the setting and the world building, because that is just utterly my favorite setting of all time. It's told like in an old Western style on the frontier, but at the same time, we're in the post-apocalyptic world, but at the same time, it's fantasy, but at the same time, it's sci-fi. Think the Book of the New Sun. Think... The Dark Tower. Hell, even Trigun uses a very similar Western theme in a post-apocalyptic wasteland of a world. I fucking love it. And then there's D. Now, D is our main character. He's also half man, half vampire, which in this world is called a Dampir, which is hard for me to say because I want to call him a Dunpeel because that's what he was called in Bloodlust. But it's a pretty typical trope of the half-vampire. He has all of their strengths, none of their weaknesses, and he is accepted by nobody. And as typical as it is, you never stop loving it. If, it's a, if that's a thing that you're into, I don't think that one day you're going to be like, ah, oh, fuck this half-vampire shit. Blade can go to hell. No, it's great. 
And D is simply one of the most interesting main characters of a story that I have ever read. Simply because he has literally no flaws and is perfect in every conceivable way. Partially due to the fact that he's half vampire, so that's going to make him more powerful. Also due to the fact of his lineage, which it's very heavily implied that his father is Dracula. Although that is never confirmed, ever. They just kind of tease you with it. He might be the son of Dracula, and then just move on. But he's clearly more powerful than a normal Dampier would be. Also, there's some other factors like a parasite that he has that has chosen to attach itself to him, which then in turn gives him some abilities that he wouldn't normally have without this other entity that has chosen to bind to him. And all of this adds up to a character that is very much literally, in certain situations, unkillable. Also, he's so good looking that people have been known to have an orgasm just from looking at him. That wasn't a joke. That's really in these books. All of this really is to say that he's not a normal main character for a story. Normally, characters are going to have certain amounts of flaws or something baked into them, weaknesses, you know, second guessings, struggles, something to give you something to latch on to as you read through the stories. He does not. He is literally the most powerful being in all of existence to have ever lived other than maybe the sacred ancestor himself. And he skates through this world after some key things happen to him and you realize, oh, he's immortal? Like literally things will happen that you're like, there's no way, you don't come back from that, but he does. So you would think that this main character wouldn't work, at least in the narrative sense of your ability to connect with and identify with and if you don't have that necessarily, then you're going to have a difficult time getting into and through the stories. And that's just not the case. Yeah, you're not necessarily identifying with Vampire Hunter D, but oh my God, are you engaged in the story and you are loving every f***ing second of it. And actually, he does a pretty good job of giving you all these other satellite characters that kind of float around D and enter into and out of the story that have very human goals, very human problems, very human issues going on, and those are the people that you tend to latch onto as far as identifying with the narrative drive of the story, all while being focused on and kind of going through the story with D. It's a wonderful storytelling style. It is just everything about it I love. I can't say enough. And then there's the writing style itself. And that is maybe my personal favorite part of everything that is these books. Because I don't know what the perspective is in these books. I don't really know enough about perspectives. Anyway, I know you have first person. I know you have second person. I know you have third person. And then within the third person, you have like 10 different styles of third person. You have like this third person, third person limited, third person, you know, omniscient, third person omnipresent. I'll fucking know. There's a lot of them. And I don't know enough about them to say which one this is, but it feels like it's definitely third person, but it feels almost like there's a narrator taking you through the story and he's narrating the events that are happening to you. This narrator then feels like he is omniscient, like he knows literally everything. And he'll be explaining things almost tediously so about what is exactly happening in the story at that second in time, all the way down to the atoms and the things that these people, like somebody uses magic and he'll, or a, a skill that they have, and he will be explaining what's going on. Oh, well, they, they grabbed the string and they vibrated their string down to one millimeter of a da -ba -da -da -da, and he will explain it into like tedium. And you're like, oh my God, what is even, what are you even doing right now? So, he feels as he's narrating, and it's not even really a narrator, that's just what it feels like to me, but it feels like as he's narrating that the whoever the voice is that you're reading through is omniscient. But then he'll like read from encyclopedias. He'll be something, a creature will walk out and he'll be like, well, according to the encyclopedia of the wastelands, this creature did, and you're like, why are we reading from the encyclopedia? What is going on here? And then 
on top of all of that, D will do something and it'll catch the narrator off guard. Like he had no idea where that was coming from. He didn't know that D could do that. And it's just then all of a sudden, this narrative voice that we're hearing the story through is completely dumbfounded because D did something so impressive that not even the omniscient narration overall god voice that is the perspective we're seeing this through has any idea how he just did what he just did you're just like what the fuck is even happening in this book i don't know if it is a specific style that i just don't know or if it's maybe transitioning between certain perspectives as it goes i don't know but it is so engaging and entertaining to read i can't help but love it. Now, having said all of that and gushed about it, it is, like I said, my maybe my favorite part of the entire thing. I must say, due to the nature of how it's written and the tediousness of how he describes some things, it can be very bland and it can be clunky at times if you are a prose kind of a person looking for something that's a little bit fancier or a flow to the way of the writing you're not gonna find it here this is relatively dry and it's relatively direct in the way that it is written but i just cannot express how engaging it actually ends up being at the end of the day now, the books themselves are these tiny little self-contained stories. If you're looking for some type of big overarching story that's going to flow through from books one to two to three to four to five, that is not what these are. These are very much episodic little books. Yes, we learn more about D in every single book, and as we learn more about him, the mystery of who he is and how he became what he is slowly builds and grows as you go, but that's about it. And that's not the same as some big overarching narrative that's going to connect all of the stories together. And it's almost like a monster of the week type situation or what mission is D going on this week or who's going to hire him to go do some random thing this time. And then on top of that, they usually have something to say, like the story or the characters or just the situations and scenarios tend to have some theme or some just, I don't know, they feel meaningful and impactful as you read them and they are very self-contained so what you get from that book you will feel truly satisfied with what it said by the end of it and you can pack it away and move on to the next one and you can do something completely fresh and new and then that one will be completely tied off with its own little bow by the end of that book also, for a book series about vampires and vampire hunters, there is shockingly little vampire action and vampires in general in the books, at least up to six. Like, there's a vampire in book one, and there is a vampire in book three, and there's some sprinkled here throughout. But it's very surprising how little vampire action there is. There's a lot of just people and monsters and creatures and magic and there might be a vampire off in the distance or some vampire that we're going towards or sometimes we might even think that we're after a vampire but maybe it's not you know it's like it's shocking how little there is much more creatures a lot of bounty hunters a lot of bounty hunter action a lot of rivalries between the bounty hunters and if there is a vampire in the story, you'd be surprised at how little page time they dedicate to that actual member of the nobility. They're more like an idea than an actual plot point. Also, these books are just really short, quick, easy reads. They very quickly become one of my favorite palate cleansers. Like if I just finished some big, chunky, thick, fat book or if I finished reading a book and I just go over and I kind of peruse my shelves like, oh, no, I don't know, I want to read next. And I just kind of can't think of, I don't know, I can't come up with anything. Ooh, let me go grab a Vampire Hunter D book because it'll take me no time at all. It's just real quick. It's real easy. It's real light. It's just a nice 
like I said, it, it's it's what I consider a palate cleanser of a book. I've got a couple of shelves of these little not vampire hunter ebooks, but they're they're what I consider my palate cleansers. And this is very quickly becoming one of my favorites of all of my palate cleansing books. It's just really hard to find a drawback as to even talk about in this series. You know, like we're trying at least point out some negatives, like here's what I liked, here's what I didn't like. The negatives are kind of far and few between and hard to find. Although I will revert back to the writing style. Even though it's like my most positive of positives, I can't help but look at it and go, I know some people are not going to connect and engage with the dryness that is this writing style and the often clunky pros. But then again, they're just so short, just go and try one and see what you think. It's not a big investment at all. But anyway, I can't recommend these books enough. If you're a fan of the anime, go read these books. If you're a fan of the manga, go read these books. If you're a fan of just dying worlds in general mixed with sci-fi and fantasy, definitely go read these books. They're fun, charming, entertaining, and at times, pretty poignant in what they have to say about human being human, the human condition, and everything in between when it comes to some things about D, but mainly the side characters that kind of float around him uh, in these stories. They're just wonderful, and I cannot recommend them enough. I highly suggest you go at least try one and see what you think. As always, everybody, the link for my Patreon's in the description below. The link for my Discord's in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.